Welcome to Postscript World on Fire Season 1. I'm Fred Fijan along with Matt Wilson. Hi, Matt. Hi, Fred. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Thanks. And we are talking about Episode 5, Episode 5 of 7 of Season 1, as I mentioned. And uh, and things are getting... Uh, well, it, as I've opened the last three or four episodes, we're at war. And we are still <laughs> we, at war. We are still at war. Where would you like to begin? Matt? So, a um, couple recurring bits we can visit. One okay. is, again, they do not name these episodes. So, I will uh, pose to you my, my favorite question now because you struggle with it so much. I do. What would you name this episode? By the third time, you'd think I'd be prepared No, I don't for want this. you to remember. It's more fun. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good then. Okay. Um, uh, that's interesting. I, I guess I, something with Dunkirk. I feel like uh, a lot of different worlds collide here in in Dunkirk, right. uh, or somewhere in in France. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just interesting how we we saw two different sets of characters um, connect. You know, and, and they don't know each other, but we certainly have been following them. So. Right. Yeah. Dunkirk will definitely talk about my my proposal for an episode name speaks to what was, for me, the most frustrating episode so far as a viewer. And Mm. so the episode title I would be is, Do I Know You? And the point here is that we see a lot of character groups and converging plot lines miraculously come together in a time and place, which seems... It really took me out of the episode at one moment. We'll, we'll talk about it. But it's like, how, what are the odds? It's like, whatever. So it's storytelling. Sometimes you do things that are mm-hmm. a little preposterous just to keep the story moving. Uh, I don't have a major problem with it, but it did uh, strike me as a little bit of a stretch to believe this time around. Yes. Um, and then on, on uh, Project Birdwatch, uh, I think all we get this time is that family photo of Cassia's family with the bird in the cage. I don't think there's a live bird. I agree. I, I And that is, you caught me watching the episode <laughs> for a third time earlier, but right before we taped, and I was actually, that was what I was trying to do, was you find a hunting bird. Hunting for the bird. Hunting for a bird right. in the episode. There, there are some forest scenes. There are probably birds hiding in the back. Well, know? there were, uh, if yeah. you believe the closed Supporting captioning, there were seagulls right. uh, there go, uh, yeah. squawking at one point. Yes. Uh, music and singing continues to be important. Uh, two specific songs. Oh, right at the opening. Yeah, the opening yeah. was great. Lois singing over Harry and his men walking. Literally here are really interesting. All I do is dream of you the whole night through. With the dawn, I still go on and dream of you. Mm-hmm. So maybe a sign that her heart and thoughts of Harry are not as clear cut as she might want, or they might want us to believe, um, or just well, maybe not. Who knows? It's going to get messier as the episode goes. On. Excellent. Yep. <laughs> and then a very moving group montage of Bye Bye Blackbird later in the episode. Yes. Uh, the troops and Harry start at Lois, and the jazz trumpet player joins in as well. Um, very interesting. And actually, so, that's a third set uh, of 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 um, stories colliding. It is a mess of yeah. stories. I just colliding. it just yeah. popped in my head. I forgot the uh, the musician. Yep. Is from Paris, from the jazz club in Paris. Da- I think dating the the partner <laughs> the has some relationship to, to Connie. Lois. Yeah. yeah. And and I, I didn't catch that initially. Yeah. I, yeah. When we talk about everybody that climbs into that rowboat near mm-hmm. the end, it's just amazing how, how that group of people came to be in the same time and place. Yeah, I'm waiting for someone to jump up and say, hey, don't you guys all know each right. other? We've it, been following you for know, five yeah. episodes. Exactly, now. but they have no clue. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Dunkirk. Uh, this was interesting. I did a, a little bit of sleuthing around. The movie Dunkirk, uh, 2017 release. So mm-hmm. it's it's. I thought it was more recent than that, but but... Uh, given that this series aired in 2020, it's very likely that that movie was on their minds. Probably, uh, yeah, The writers writing and it. producers mm-hmm. as they're coming up with this. Um, but the real thing that, that irks me a little bit about tying in Dunkirk is, uh, according to the internet, um, the Dunkirk evacuation was late May to early June 1940. Oh. And okay. May 10th, 1940 was when Germany invaded Belgium, France, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. So, okay, so that's where we timeline are. Timeline-wise, a couple of weeks have gone by. And yeah. I'm okay with this for almost every character except Gregor's. Yeah. Gregor's. I don't know how he— How did I, he end up there? So from eastern Poland with that English regiment he landed with, mm-hmm. they would have to go through Germany to get to France. Now, time-wise, travel-wise, I think you could do that in a couple weeks. But given that there's a war going on, I don't see how an English tank unit just casually strolls through Germany 
on their way to the, the beaches of, of France. So that's the only part that kind of made me think, all right, that's a little bit of a stretch as far as, you know. Yeah, I, I, it was, I was surprised to see him show up there. And I was, yes. yeah. Uh, I was shocked. Mm-hmm. He looks like crap. Now, he's had a tough couple weeks, a couple months maybe, but and yeah. Everyone he has known or thought he knew was, has yeah. either been killed uh, or is in a different country. Right. I mean, he's really on his own now. Now, the good news for him, there is an off chance he'll run into Harry. And he would remember Harry because a few months before they were oh, yeah. close. Like all, in the first episode, which yep. seems like several years yeah, ago now. a lifetime ago. So, <laughs> so there's a chance that will happen. But um, otherwise, uh, interesting episode. Where do you want to start as far as other... We have a couple character groups we've been following along. Let's talk about, you know, let's actually stay, let's come back to Dunkirk in a moment. Uh, an action that's happening outside of that would be in, uh, the Rosslers. I thought that was an interesting uh, storyline where uh, we see um, Hilda and, and her mother off at, at the lake, mm-hmm. as, as was uh, suggested would happen in the last episode. Uh, meanwhile, um, uh, uh, Hilda's father. What is his first name? I forgot. Uh, I think it's Uve. Uve. Uve in his factory, or mm-hmm. uh, uh, it's like a textile factory. Yeah. yeah, and 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 certainly you continue to see the conflict in his mind. You know, he's joined the party, uh, maybe somewhat reluctantly, but in theory to blend in and hopefully protect his daughter. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be working necessarily. Um, and he comes into conflict with uh, one of his employees. And uh, and I think it all makes sense to me that she was the one that somehow made the connection to Hilda having having the uh, epileptic, epileptic seizures, not necessarily Nancy. You know, because he was thinking that it was Nancy's fault that sh- that Hilda's on, on the radar. Right, Nancy or that nosy neighbor at their apartment complex. There's a couple of things that could have been. Right. They've kind of vanished, the, the nosy Yeah, neighbors. we haven't seen her for a little bit. <laughs> Frau Klopp, maybe. Klopp, yes. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned um, <clears throat> Uwe maybe hesitantly joining the party. In an earlier episode, we weren't quite sure what his intentions were. It seems very clear now he's no fan of the movement, um, rips down Nazi flags in a, a, a rage of emotion, uh, receives a letter that it's written in German. I didn't try to translate it, but it's clearly about his daughter. Yep. Um, and with the help of a uh, iron, makes yeah. it very clear to all of us exactly what he thinks of the Nazi party and Frau Pessler in particular. Right. Don't forget his son is also fighting. Fighting, uh, yeah. In the war. Yep. Uh, Some of yeah. 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 Um, Right. As far as we're aware, he's still alive. He was, uh, he was kind of came into contact with Cassia, which we'll get to later. But... Yep. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm sure it wasn't meant to be a funny line, but a line from Nancy again later in the episode where, uh, you know, she said, have you ever moved a dead body before? Uh, and, and he's like, no, no of course not. Uh, and, and it kind of alludes to that Nancy apparently has dealt with this before, uh, and why a journalist would, who knows, uh, but I mean, more reporter would be the. And probably right. casual observation and, and hopefully nothing more uh, sinister. Yeah. So, I mean, so at, at, toward the end of the episode, you see um, uh, Uwe and Nancy um, um, disposing of the body yeah. into the water and hopefully no one seeing uh, them. But, uh, yeah, my first reaction when he took that action was, well, that doesn't seem like it's going to end well. Um, well, for her, obviously, but for, for Uwe, I mean, I, I just – it just seems like – these things don't go unnoticed. Yeah, it, it's it, yeah, it, it's tough. And there's you know, you can make excuses. Well, she was here, she left. I have no idea what happened after that. We'll we'll see. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's Nazi Germany. There's snoops everywhere. Could have been witness. I did like that they wrapped the body in a Nazi flag. And I tried to decide and we'll see what you think. Was that a message or symbolism, or was it just convenience? He had a lot of them and probably didn't care about wasting any, and maybe <laughs> didn't want to wrap her in his own. Factory equipment, you know, the materials. Spent much more time thinking of this. Uh, you know, I figured. <laughs> I figured it was just that they would fly. They wouldn't be uh, as noticeable um, if if they're you know. Although maybe someone might say, "Hey, why aren't you flying that instead of having it all mauled up right. like that?" But yeah. I don't know. That convenient. They had yeah, a laying around. They had a lot them. of Nazi flags laying around. Hey, well, let's use this. Right. Um, so you mentioned Cassia. We see her briefly. Um, yeah, not until about the midpoint of the episode. Yeah, and not a lot of movement here. Just 
kind of seeing her continue on that progression of being more comfortable as a, I keep calling her Black Widow, but as an assassin, you know, an accomplice to assassin. But, you know, and if what I thought in the previous episode would give her pause to continue this is that it came close to backfiring on her. And in, in one case, this time as well, came mm-hmm. close to backfiring on her. But yeah, but yeah, uh, uh, she <laughs> continues to do this and kind of one by one assassinating these, these, mm-hmm. uh, uh, SS officers. Um, there is a, a brief, somewhat odd moment of tension between her and Tamaz, her sort of partner in crime, mm-hmm. where it seems like they're debating each other on who is enjoying this more or who is more committed to the cause. Um, later in the episode, they circle back and seem to make amends, but it was a little brief moment of tension there, I guess. But I don't know. It almost seemed like Tomaz was trying to make the move on Cassia. To be well, honest. yeah, he, he had eyes for her earlier, so... Yeah. He's like, where's your husband now? Right. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Good Which, you know, switching <clears throat> gears, uh, we, we meet Vernon. Uh, you know, Vernon. The, uh, that also seems to be, uh, has some eyes on Lois. It's probably Harry's cousin. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I don't know, oh. but you know, it's just the way this is going. <laughs> so, yeah, so somehow. Lois and Connie are doing their tour. They're at some air base, mm-hmm. and, and Hunter, or Vernon Hunter is there. He's a temporally grounded pilot. His plane is getting repaired. Um, fan of George Orwell, I thought that was an interesting reference, mm-hmm. um, would have been timely. Orwell, of course, having lived through World War I and, and learning his anti-fascist interests and went on to, I don't know exactly when, um, Animal Farm or maybe 1984 were published, but certainly he would have begun writing and sharing his thoughts yeah. around that time. Um, Vernon is a freedom fighter. He actually says, I'm not really fighting for a specific government or a country. I just want people to live the lives the way they, they want. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and he and Lois sort of agree to be pen pals of sorts as mm-hmm. we see them at the end of the episode. Yeah. And we'll see how that develops. If he has some relation or relative to, to one of the existing characters, yeah. which you're right. Probably no. li- as luck will have it. Uh, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> there's only two episodes left. So for the season. Yep. Yep. Um, I mentioned Gregor's a little bit. There isn't maybe a whole lot more to add there, except it does help us talk about Tom. So I, I think this is a, a good bridge. Gregor's mm-hmm. showing up at Dunkirk baffles me, but let's just roll with it. Okay, it's it's, it's theater. Um, it does give us a brief moment of drama where he tries to climb. Well, he jumps the line, yeah. tries to climb on board the, the boat that Tom is helping steer, uh, and Tom pulls a gun on him to get him to back off. Now, the scene... Didn't really work for me. The the tension, the music wasn't really as dramatic as either they were hoping or maybe they weren't mm-hmm. hoping for it to be overly dramatic. Um, I, I think I said already, I feel for Gregor's. He, he looks a mess. He needs sleep. He needs food. Uh, I'm glad he gets off the beach ultimately and, and hopefully we'll find a better place. Um, how did that scene work for you? Did you feel like Gregor's was ever in danger uh, I mean, everyone's in danger, sure. right? I mean, yeah. especially at the beach there. Uh, but yeah, it was um, it was one of those moments where it's like of all the boats, of all the people, right. you know, these two uh, connect. But uh, yeah, I, I think you, you you kind of want to pull for for Gregor's a little bit. You, you uh, but you know, he gets pushed aside by another officer saying, you know, get out of here, you Polish so and so. Um, so really no love for him regardless. Uh, but you know, because I guess they could see that he, he cut the line and everyone's trying to escape and it's right. a really complicated matter. You know, the ships can't get too close because the water, it's too shallow. And, the, you know, as I think Tom mentioned, you know, the tide's about to go out, we got to get moving. Um, and then they all end up having to get off the boat in it for a moment anyway. Right. Um, and I, I, I guess that's the end of, is, is that the end of Tom? So it's a little bit of a cliffhanger in that we see him kind of get strafed basically by by one of the German planes. Yeah, it I, isn't clear yeah. exactly if he got hit, if he got killed, or if he just, because of the concussion, whatever, got, got knocked down. It, I they, thought, Yeah, I thought he, he just maybe just dove for cover. Right. Um, yeah. Then the second time I thought, oh, they, we don't see him again in the episode. Yeah, you're right. Maybe yeah. it's a cliffhanger. We, we'll... See resolve. I mean, obviously, Douglas uh, is uh, as we saw him two episodes ago when when Tom was on on the HMS Ex- Exeter. He right. was a, a wreck. And interestingly, um, we see 
Douglas, who had admitted being somewhat shell shocked from World War from the Great War, right. um, kind of the parallel that he's uh, dealing with, as well as those uh, other uh, um, officers we see um, uh, that are dealing with with shell shock. Right. And so that you know, Douglas again, as I said last episode, I think is probably one of the most likable characters. You know, I, you know, he's he's a wreck. He's worried about his kids. Uh, you know, he's dealing with the demons of the of the First World War, mm-hmm. uh, and he's just he's just trying to do what's best. Yeah, absolutely. I think the most likable. Uh, he has kind of a roller coaster episode, like you were saying. I really liked how he dealt with Robina. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been a great sort of father figure with Jan. They they play the best kind of football together, for example. Um, Robina is kind of showing her old racist self a bit, maybe a little bit of a prejudice there. Um, yeah, I mean, because I felt like in the last two episodes that she had really turned a tide. I liked um, her. Yeah, there was a time where I liked starting her. starting to get yeah. likable. Yeah. Uh, but she, no. She yeah, didn't. they debate the Polish race, so to speak. Um, and she even questions um, uh, Douglas's pacifism mm-hmm. it, somewhat cynically. He, he's interested in the war because he sees it as maybe a necessary war. And she, I think, has mixed interests, maybe a little more sympathetic to the fascist or Nazi movement, even in England there. Right, that was established. because of her prejudices. That was established in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so they, they, go, uh, they go into some verbal sparring at times, so but that was kind of interesting to watch play out. Um, but later in the episode, he is a mess. Yeah, there's a really neatly designed uh, scene where two radio signals kind of mesh together as he's trying to mm-hmm. tune to get the news, and it bleeds into sort of what we infer to be his mental state of a jumbled sort of, and he runs out into the street and he's banging on doors and such. And it really did kind of help lock in what it must feel like inside his head of dealing with his memories, his his care for his son. I think some care for Harry. You know, he does talk about Harry uh, fondly throughout some of the episodes. Uh, I'm glad that Lois and Connie are with him there toward the end to try to talk him back down. And yeah. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe he'll be able to find some stability here, uh, or maybe hopefully some news about Tom, some good news about Tom. So then there's Harry. Harry. So <laughs> Harry, Lieutenant Stan, um, interesting play off of each other through most of the episode. We see conflicting philosophies. I, I, I won't, I won't talk badly about Stan. I think it comes from a, a pragmatism of. We're not equipped. We don't have the, the training or the supplies to take care of all these people. We just have to get our men out. That right. is the mission. And Harry never wavering from, well, no, the mission is more than that. We need to take care of, in essence, everybody we run into. Right. There's um, the, the group of shell-shocked, uh, the term that gets used in the episode, shell-shocked soldiers, which Stan is more attuned to infer as cowardice yeah. you know, in, in, in the face of war versus right. He's a reaction not- to it, right? He's not believing that that's an actual symptom, and that was probably a common, a common theme back then. Yeah. You know that. You know, now with hindsight, we can see that. Right. Yep. Um, Harry's care for the young girl Claudette and wanting to get her to a French family. Um, Harry's affinity for the Senegalese soldiers that they run in with, and actually uh, defends them in front of some other troops later in the episode. Um, but there's a nice moment between Stan and Harry where I think Stan does show if not begrudging, but true respect for Harry and his decisions, recognizes what he's trying to do, gives him a, a firm salute before mm-hmm. they part ways. And I thought that was a nice bit of closure between them to show that, you know, hard feelings of stressful war aside, there was still a, a matter of respect between the two. And um, and then later we do see Stan, two of the troops, and Gregors and the jazz musician all <laughs> climb into the same rowboat. <laughs> In yeah, <laughs> I, I I feel like we'll see Stan and Harry again. I, I yeah. I'd be shocked if they're yeah. I don't separate. Right. Doesn't seem right. I mean, they are obviously they're, they're yeah. I I feel like they will reconnect at some point yep. soon. So the episode ends. We see Harry actually fire his gun into the air, asserts his dominance over the beach, and says, you know, "These soldiers are with us. They're yeah. coming with us again to the the black Sengali soldiers." And then um, the last scene is just the the coastline with. I don't know if you look closely, some of the boats were smoking and mm-hmm. listing. Some didn't look so good. It, you know, Harry's chance of escape looks possible, maybe still risky, like you said earlier. Nobody's safe on that beach, certainly. A uh, lot to look forward to in the last two episodes of season one. I agree. I agree. All right. 
So if you're riding along, you have uh, your own thoughts. If there's things that we've missed, we've said before, we're not historians. We're just trying to figure this out as we go. Please let us know. Uh, add your th- questions, your thoughts, little tidbits, historical ties that uh, would be interesting to share. We'd be happy to share that in this show. A um, couple ways you can do that. Uh, find us through email, postscript at WITF.org or just PS at WITF.org. All of the WITF social medias, you'll find us there. You can uh, leave your questions, leave your thoughts. Uh, you can listen to this, of course, in all major podcast engines. If you happen to want to watch us, find us on YouTube. It's the WITF Mosaic channel. Um, this and a bunch of other great content on arts, culture, lifestyle, all good stuff. Um, if you are having so much fun that you want to help us make more of this content, and we do hope you do, please visit WITF.org slash mosaic for more information about how you can support this and other programs. I want to give a shout out to Ali Amaros running tech and John Ferreras on the edits. Thank you for riding along. Thank you for watching and listening, and we'll talk to you again with the next episode soon. <laughs>